Okay, so hopefully this will be the last time I have to use uh, the camera and I'll try to annotate on the page itself. We are moving on to chapter 2.1. And as I said, we are stepping away from the graphing portion for now and learning sort of the, the building blocks necessary for the graph. Okay, up until now, especially assignment, I gave you an equation. I told you to plug random numbers in and then graph it. Unfortunately for you, that's actually like the, the elementary, middle school, or even grade nine way to do things. Up from grade 10 and grade 11, and of course, grade 12, when you look at something, the idea, a vague picture of what it looks like needs to pop out. That's how much practice you need to have. And if it does not, well, I'm gonna say, keep practicing until it does. And I'll say it right now, and this is a little scary. It will be very difficult to find great success in this course if you are not able to look at an equation and have a vague idea of what the graph might look like. If you cannot get to that point, every math question is going to take a really long time. And you'll end up finding you, it's not you, you'll think you'll need extra time, but it's not actually that. You're a slow thinker, you're just lacking practice. Well, I'll warn you right now, chapter two, we're now in it. It's not just introductions to grade 11 functions anymore. Okay, we'll pick up the pace. And if you are not finding the kind of success that you want in this course, then come talk to me, but things will have to change. It won't get easier. It's gonna become more and more challenging in that I'm going to push you to learn new things. So get ready. Here we go. Um, when before we begin with these expressions, when we are doing these x squareds and whatnot, we need to use proper math terminology, and so you need to be wary of that. Like for example, if I say add the terms together, okay, a term is simply put an individual number. It could be a coefficient multiplying with the variable, but it's a, excuse me, it's a single number. So for example, if I bring this down, 2x squared, that's a single term. A 3, that's also a single term. A negative 4x squared, that's also a single term. And the 8, that's also a single term. A term will always be separated by another term with a plus or a minus. Sort of like, like spaces in a, in a sentence, okay? Like terms. Like terms are when the variables are identical. So for example, I'm gonna highlight this right here. By variables, I mean x squared, x, y, z, m, a, b, c, whatever. So two x squared, Negative four x squared, all like terms. On the flip side, if I have three, eight, all like terms. Simplify has a variety of uses. It could be reducing, it could be grouping like terms. The simplest way to define simplify is do anything that makes the expression more concise, more neat, and readable. Grab a pencil, let's get to this. Some people are already falling asleep. Do you guys like sleep really, really late every single day or something? Maybe it's uncanny, I don't know what it's in. On my YouTube feed, they came out this like, it's really, really muscular guy, really good looking guy, right? Because only good looking guys make YouTube videos, obviously, just kidding. Um, and he, for whatever reason, he had to be stuck in a hotel room for three days. And he had to talk about, or he's like, since I'm here and people have been raving about it, I'm going to try it. What am I going to try? I'm going to see what's the big deal about being productive and waking up in the morning. So most people wake up late because they sleep late, but they like to be productive at night. When they work out, it's at night. When they, when they do you know, amazing creative things, it's at night. 
right? They do artwork or whatever. It's in the dead of night where everyone is quiet and sleeping, just like that peacefulness. The challenge was to reverse it. And this guy is like waking up at four in the morning. 4.05 was drink water. 4.05 to 4.15 was meditate 10 minutes and then cold shower. And then hit the gym. And then breakfast. So that was his morning. And he already did one, two, three, four, five things before everyone was even awake. He wakes up, people are coming back from the club. Like he looks outside and people are like stumbling out of their taxi cabs. And he's like, wow, that's different. Is he going to keep it up? He says he won't because he likes his night anyways. But human biology wise, let me tell you right now. There is something about your thyroid. There's something about your liver. There's something about the part of your body that give out hormones that activate naturally at specific times of the day. Teens especially, there's something called GH, growth hormone that comes from your thyroid. And it is most active and secreted from around 10-ish to 6-ish and it also helps cure your body. It resets and makes your body stronger. If you're not sleeping during that time, you're not maximizing that hormone. Think about it. When's the last time you slept or was in bed by 10? Every day you're not in bed by that time, you're actually not letting your body heal. You're good because you're teens and you're strong, you're young. But think about it, okay? So a lot of people getting tired. I think it's also important to have a good routine. Here we go. So when we are grouping like terms, literally, you're not going to change the X squared. Think of the X squared as a symbol, as a number we don't know. But either way, I have two of these x squares. I have negative four. I'm taking away four of those x squares. How many do I have left? You don't have to write this next step, but I'm going to show you what's happening. I'm going to take those blue highlighted portions, put it next to each other, and the pinks, and I'm going to put it next to each other. And when you do so, there you go. That's all it is. So when I ask you to simplify, it could mean a lot of different things. But ultimately, what you're trying to do is make it look neater, make it look nicer. And one of the things is to group like terms. It's so much nicer to look at this than this. Like, would you rather see plus three plus eight or would you like to see plus 11? Same idea. Let's go to the next one. If you have multiple brackets like this, I'm going to introduce something called distributive property early. Welcome. And that is having a negative there would mean a negative one is going to be multiplied to everything in the bracket. So I am going to rewrite this 3x squared plus 3x uh, plus x. That's subtracted by a 2x squared that's subtracted by a 4x, and that is being added by a 5. Look at that carefully. Please take a look at the signs and see if that makes sense to you. I'll give you about, you know, like 10 seconds to do that while I highlight this. If you're okay, then great. If not, please, please raise your hand. While that's happening, let me update my thing. Uh, where are you? And Molly's here. Yay. Mm -hmm. Not updating. What's going on? Okay. Anyways, let's keep going. Grouping like terms, I'm now going to do this in my head. You don't have to. If you don't want to, you want to write it all out, you can. But here we go. 3 minus 2, that's a single 1x squared. A 1 minus 4, that's a negative 3x, and then plus 5. 
this point in time, I am going to assume that everyone is okay with adding and subtracting integers. If you are still having some trouble doing things like one minus four, and that makes that equal to a negative three, you may have to go and review it. I unfortunately don't have time to review um, adding and subtracting integers as that is from like, you know, middle school and, and grade nine. And so I am going to move on. But if you know, deep in your heart, that you do need some review, by all means, reach out. I'll try to find some resources for you and walk you through it. Yes. Correct. Correct. Right. As an example, some what the uh, Kali was asking, it's only the negative that's multiplied by second bracket. And that's true. If I have, let's say in this case, one minus a four, that's actually the same as what I had before, one minus a four. Why? That that everything inside that bracket is being subtracted. So this entire bracket is being subtracted. So we just we need to screw the property. Next. Next thing you must be uh, familiar with is this word called expand. Expand, sort of like what I'm doing here, means whatever I have in front of the bracket, multiply it out and make it bigger. In other words, expand it, get rid of the brackets to, you know, to make, uh, remove any confusions and then group like terms together. And that is something that you need to do without even thinking. It's just like, oh, okay, I know how to do this. It's not like, okay, step one, what is it? Very different in your approach. So here, I am going to take a two, multiply it here and here. A negative three will be multiplied here and here. What does that equal? Well, two times two, A, that's just four A. Notice the A does not change. Two times one B, then I have two Bs. Negative three is multiplying with A, uh, with a three and an A, that's negative nine A. And a negative three is multiplying with a negative four, that's a positive 12 B. Welcome, we'll grab a sheet from the front. One second while I, Comments once again. Let's see. Mine's here about five minutes ago. Uh, Tini is here maybe about five minutes ago. Sam is here. Davida is here. Okay. Let's move on. And once again, once you get to this point, it's exactly like before. So essentially doing this question means you're doing the previous question as well and practicing the previous question. Here we go. Four minus nine, that's a negative five A, two and a positive 12, that's 14 B. This is what I mean by simple. Would you rather work with this or would you rather work with that? That's the only question. That's it. Expand and simplify. The remaining examples that I have, we're going to we're going to go through. Um, it, it's a, it's gonna. Um, how should I do this? It is going to get you to do this thing called distributive property, no matter what. Who here remembers foil? Does that do you ring? Does that ring a bell? I hate foil. You don't have to know it because foil doesn't work for anything other than that format. Like you're like, oh, I know how to do this question. But what if I give you something like this where it has three? All of a sudden, this thing called FOIL doesn't make sense. This FOIL actually stands for first, outside, inside, last. It's just to get you to do distributive property and not forget. So I'm going to offer you something else instead. All right. I'm going to skip B because B is exactly the same. In case you wanted to know, a negative one multiplies to everything there. A negative two multiplies to everything inside the bracket. Okay? I can let you try that. C, I will do what I mean by FOIL, and then I'm going to change that up. FOIL means literally distributive property. It means first, 
multiply the first numbers. FO. O is multiply the outside number. So this with that. But doesn't that already look familiar? Weren't we already doing that? So FOIL was basically saying multiply the first outside, the inside, and then the last two numbers. That can be confusing. So here's what I am going to say instead. I hope this sticks with you. Every single number in the bracket gets a chance to dance with every single number in the last bracket. Every single number is going to touch and multiply with every single number in the other bracket. So let's focus on X. X is going to multiply to two X. <coughs> so there's one times two, that's two. And X multiplied with an X is X squared. Now the blue X is also going to multiply with the one, one X. From there, now that the blue X is done, it's multiplied with everything it can possibly multiply. We're going to move on to the next number, that negative five. The negative five is then going to have a turn with everyone else. So negative five times two, negative five times neg a positive one, done. And again, once you get here, it's the exact same question as up there. It's all just that extra step of expanding. So I'll finish this off. Two X squared is all alone, nothing happens. X, negative 10 X, well, one minus 10, negative nine X, and that's it. And again, is it easier to work with this or is it easier to work with this? Well, it depends on the situation, but this is what expand and simplify means. When you expand it, it looks a little messy, so make it neater. Stopping right here, any questions? So once again, this time instead, I can't do FOIL, and this is why, this time I set it up intentionally so that it's a little more confusing. I have two numbers, two terms, multiplying with three. It's not two with just two. How do you multiply it? You can't use that FOIL acronym, but you can do this. Every term gets a chance to dance with every other term in the other bracket, okay? So start slow. I'm gonna let you try it. Don't look up here unless it's to confirm your calculations. Take the blue X, in other words, take the first number in the first bracket and go ahead multiplying with everything else in the other bracket, like so. I'll give you a minute. And it's important that you can do this by yourself. Ryan, stay with me. Stay with me, keep trying. It's this, and this, and this. And I'll highlight this here, saying that that's all from the blue X. And once you're ready, you can multiply. It becomes negative five x squared, negative 10 x minus a five. And that's from the pink, negative five. Yes. It would be a 2x squared. Good catch. So glad you're here. It'd have been pretty bad. That's right. 
So x times x squared is an x cubed. The blue x times 2x is 2x squared. And the blue x times 1 is just x. That's all from that blue x multiplying with every term in the next bracket. That's going to be the same, I guess, rule every single time. Even if I have three numbers in the first bracket, three terms, it's the same thing. I mean, I could prove it to you uh, right after just to show you that that's exactly how it works. Here we go. From here, we shall simplify, which means make it look neater. 2x squared and negative 5x squared, they are the same term. That's negative 3x squared. x, negative 10x, those are the same. There's are like terms. And so we have negative 9x. And then negative 5 is all alone. There we go. Okay. So here's my proof of why this distributive property makes sense. Let's choose some super simple numbers. Um, Hayden, give me five numbers. Super simple. One to five. One to five. Okay. One plus two, three minus four minus five. Okay. I'm going to perform that. One plus two is three. And three minus four minus five. Can you then? Then your head. It's a minus. Uh, it's a minus six. So the answer is negative eighteen. Now you don't have to write this down. Notice what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to actually take my example, and I'm going to do distributive property. Ready? One times these three numbers is positive three, negative four, negative five. And then two times three, two times negative four, two times negative five is six, negative eight, negative 10. Let's work that out. If everything goes well, my answer should be a negative 18. The way I do it this way and the way I do it this way, there shouldn't be any difference. And so here we go. Three times negative four, three, Negative four, negative five, that's negative six. Negative six plus six, well, that's gonna be a zero, leaving me with negative 18. There you go. It works out, right? So the reason why we do distributive property in this way is because we can't solve it ahead of time. These aren't numbers we can add together yet. We don't know what X is, but that's where the multiplication comes. Okay, Sam, with us. Okay. Lastly, I'm actually not going to do this for you because I think you can do it by yourself. And then we can, you can check your answers by yourself after. But when you do this, a lot of people feel like as they get good at uh, distributive property, they'll take this exponent of two and apply it like this saying, isn't that what we're supposed to do? You're gonna make a big mistake when you do that. Instead, don't do this. Please rewrite it as what it's supposed to be. Write it out. 2x minus three is being multiplied by itself. I guarantee it's gonna save you a lot of trouble. And if you know why I asked you to write it out, you're already well ahead. If you don't know, then just believe me for now. Yes, Patina. So, we're writing it by using the exponent of two. What if the exponent is like i? There's too much to write. Thank you for asking that, Fatini. The question was well, if you have this as a three or a four, clearly it's going to be annoying. Clearly. It's going to be super annoying and it is in grade 12 data management where you are eligible to take after this course it teaches you a special shortcut called binomial expansion and they use the amazing theory of number patterns to literally just 
write it out. Even if I gave you uh, the power of 10, if you know the pattern, you can solve it in like three minutes. Because it's literally just matching numbers. It's not even calculating. It's literally, how fast can you count from one to 10? Really fast? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six. Can you count down? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's all you need to do binomial expansion next year. It's a pattern. And they're using the beauty of patterns to do that. So for now, you learn the annoying way so that when you grow up, you'll appreciate the shortcut. <laughs> all right. And I won't give you more than a power of two and stuff like this. All right. Um, so here, distributive property. You can do it one of two ways. You could take the five and multiply this first. Please note the five does not multiply to the other uh, to the other bracket. Okay. Or you can pretend the five isn't there and you can multiply this as you normally would. I'll give you a choice. Ryan, you get to choose today. Would you rather do this as is or do what you're familiar with first? Do what you're familiar with first. Absolutely. So I'm gonna white out this number. Remember, because it's a multiplication, you could do whatever you want. So I'm going to hide this, and I am going to multiply binomials first. So this is going to be 5. Okay, so I'm going to pretend the 5 isn't there. 2x, 2x, 4x squared. 2x, negative 3, negative 6x. Okay, and done the first number. Let's go to the next one. If you still want to highlight it, by all means, do so, right? It, it really does help pop out. Here's my thing. Okay, it really does help pop out. And then negative three times two X, negative six X, negative three times negative three, positive nine. So I'm gonna simplify that again. Four X squared, negative 12 X, Plus nine. And of course, the five is there. And here's the reason why I pretend the five isn't there. Some people will start multiplying this like crazy. Oh, whoa, this is this bracket's next to the five. Don't we have to multiply that? No. Yes. And so now that we have, uh, we've got color it green just to show you. This entire portion is now this entire portion. I will multiply the five in becomes ooh, 20 x squared. Five times negative 12 is negative 60 x and five times four, 45. That's the final answer. So yes, it's a little long, but I guarantee as a mathematician, as you get lazier and lazier like me, you do these so many times, you will start to see the next step before you even write it. And you're like, I'm so annoyed. I'm just going to skip it. I guarantee you will get there if you have enough practice. But you got to put in the hours. You got to put in work. You have to. So I left you one example. Um, if you are ready, please go ahead and turn to the back. I'm going to start something new. The back page is going to be an introduction to something new that I'm going to try to do for your handouts. So I know a lot of people are still not cracking opening their books. You have to crack open your textbooks, but I want to focus your attention on some types of questions. Sounds good? Okay. In your textbook, if you don't know already, every section in the textbook will have questions for practice, but some of them are very special. They will have little letters next to them in our specific textbook. Number 10 from chapter 2.1 is an A question. Number 11 is a T question. Let me explain what those are. A is going to tell you exactly what they want you to find, and you have to use your knowledge of multiplication expanding. T is not going to tell you how to find it. They just want something and you have to figure out how to get there. 
These are all different levels of questions that we are, I guess, uh, mandated to get you to try. So let's try the A first. The T, I'm hoping we have enough time so that I can give you a break, but here it is. T. Uh, you will see some questions will require past knowledge, so beware. For example, uh, you need to remember that the area of a parallelogram, I'll give you this, is the base times the vertical height, not the slanted height, but the vertical height. The area of a trapezoid is the average of the long side and the short side times the vertical height. So bear with me. We're gonna be doing some funky stuff, right? This might come in handy if we have a quiz or a test, so pay attention. Please write a mathematical expression for the area of each shape. Let me remind you, for a parallelogram, the area is going to be the base times the vertical height. So what's the base? Not rocket science, come on. What's the base? Hands up, do you see it? Hmm? Mm -mm -mm. The bait. Yeah. But you're looking at the right spot, though. Okay. This is 2x minus 4. And this the vertical height, therefore, is 2x plus 3. That's all they're really asking. They want you to write a mathematical statement or an expression or area. And this would be it. You would be done. Except look at the question again. What does it say? Yeah. So getting this would only get you half the marks. The other half comes from following through. So let's expand it. I'm going to give you two minutes. Try it. This is exactly like, once we've set it up, this is exactly like our previous examples. So the correct answer, if you work through all this, would be 4x squared negative 2x minus 12. Might be wondering how I got that. Well, that's from practice too. In my head, I got so lazy, I didn't want to write this step. That's how much practice I have done. Let me tell you another story. I was not very great with math when I was younger. I was actually subpar. Subpar. I'll tell you a quick story. Some of you might have heard it. Maybe Maria has heard it because she was in my grade nine class. When I was in grade one, two, three, four, five, I thought I was pretty good with math. My father was relatively scary and he grew up in Korea. So he had Korean standards for me. And uh, I remember when I was done grade two, so this was like the summer before grade three. This was like July, okay? My dad was working in the basement for our small business and he calls me down one day. I'm like, oh man, am I in trouble? I have no idea why, but every time my dad calls me like that, I'm in trouble. So I go down to this, I'm like, yes, dad. And he goes, have you, have you memorized the multiplication tables yet? I'm like, no, we didn't do that in school yet. He's like, what? Because he has higher standards. That summer day, that summer day, I memorized up to the nine times tables because I had to. So I had to, and it sucked. But again, to me, it was like a challenge. Like I could do this and, and I was able to, it wasn't a problem. But I realized it's benefit. And because of that, I thought I was so smart. So smart. So smart to the point where my parents were like, mm, maybe we need to get him to take the test for UTS. If you don't know what UTS is, it's a University of Toronto Schools. It's a, um, it's a pretty well-funded, it does school, in my opinion, it does science and math and a lot of uh, subjects properly, but it's very hard. So I took the test for English and for math. And guess what? My English was average. My math, which I had so much pride in, was lower than the average. And I was like, what's going on? And my dad, you know, having standards once again, beat the math in me, so to speak. Beat the math in me. And uh, it, as opposed to getting depressed and worried, though, it really did get me more angry, I guess, 
I, I would like to think that it was the better approach to be like, how could I be lower? And then I just got better at it, right? I just fueled that fire and that anger in a proper way. Um, and it wasn't easy, but by the time I got to uh, grade 10, grade 11, um, remember up in grade five, like everyone in my school wasn't that great with math. So I thought I was pretty good because I was better than all my friends. And then I got to grade like, you know, eight, nine, and 10. And I was like, whoa, these people are smart. I gotta, I gotta catch up, I gotta work hard. And I, again, know that I was subpar. And all of a sudden with my journey and my anger and my frustration of not being as good as my friends or whatever, suddenly I'm here teaching math. Luckily that journey allowed me to sort of learn the why instead of the how. And I'm trying to explain that to you and you might not be interested. But I want to tell you, it didn't come from me just looking at it, being like, oh, I get it, sort of like English or history or whatever, or like psychology or whatnot. It's through crazy blood, sweat, and tears practice to the point where I literally know what the next step is without doing it. And if you're not willing to do it, then I can't help but say you, it's not, you don't really want it. You just want the mark. You don't really want the math which is fine, but don't think that you're going to achieve incredible success in this course if it's just doing bare minimum, okay? I keep having these side stories for you, but I apologize. Area, for a trapezoid, the formula is average of parallel sides and vertical height. Average of the parallel sides means I have to add the parallel sides and divide it by two. So this is a little long. It's a long side is three X plus one plus the X plus one. All of it is gonna be divided by two multiplied by the height. Why is that bracket so small? And so I will simplify 3x plus x, 4x. 1 plus 1 is a 2. And all of this is going to be divided by a 2. And then whatever that result is, is going to be multiplied by 2x minus 1. I did it again. Let's do it. The 2 is dividing everything in the numerator. So it's going to be four divided by two and two divided by two. This will be two X plus one, and this will be two X minus one. Does that look familiar? At this point, it should look familiar. We are going to multiply it out. And again, because of my crazy practice and really, really, really absurd amount of time putting in work, I know that the final answer is going to be 4x squared minus one. So it's up to you to do that middle step. That's gonna be your answer. Yes. Mm -hmm. This part, Yeah. yes. Ah, I see what you're asking. Um, the reason why this is addition is because the formula says it's the average of the two sides. And if you remember average, when you want to average something, you take a number, you take another number, and then you add it and then divide it by how many numbers you added together. So it could be like a number plus a number plus a number. If I add three numbers, I have to divide by three, right? No. So just to remind you, uh, or just to make a parallel here, you see how there's two, two things that I'm adding and then divide by two? Well, 3x plus one is one number that I'm adding. x plus one is the other number that I'm adding, just like we have here, and then I'm dividing by two. Okay? So it's an addition because we're talking about averages here. If there was a reason, if someone something said, yeah, I have to multiply, then you multiply like you normally do. It's very important to follow the instructions. Yes. Um, 
Yes. It's not that you don't, I, I am doing it. So I'll demonstrate it right now. I will take the first term, which is two X. I'm gonna multiply it out and I'll take the second term, positive one, and I'll multiply it out. Ready? So I'm doing the exact same thing as we did earlier. Two X times two X, four X squared. And then two X times negative one is? Negative two X, good. Positive one times two X, positive and positive one times negative one is negative one. And when you multiply it out, what happens to the middle terms? Negative two, positive two. That will end up becoming a zero. That's why it sort of disappeared. And I knew that because I did these kinds of questions a gazillion times, right? So that was up to you to sort of figure out from, all the practice you've done. Same with this one, it would be 4x squared, multiply, that's 6x, multiply, that's negative 8x, multiply, that's negative 12. And I already did this in my head. That's why I got the negative two. Yes, absolutely. Question? Uh, again, it is because the question asked me to average. So when you average, after you add two numbers, you have to divide by the same amount of numbers, right? So if I added four, like for example, um, how many marks do you get on your report card? How many different courses do you have? Eight, eight. So you would add all eight marks and then you would divide by eight. Same thing, that's how you get your average mark. So the same thing, average of parallel, you're, you're adding two different numbers, you divide by two. Okay, so again, it's all in the language. You have to be able to interpret that into mathematical uh, statements. Last one, I'll do this very quickly. And if you wanna come back to it, you can, but before I forget, again, there's always going to be questions you can try as practice. I will check it. Here we go, let's do this really quickly so that you can catch a break. Circular radius of a, uh, of a pizza, a circular pizza has a radius of X. So the radius is X. You can't really see it on the print, but I hope you'll see that it's an X. Write an expression for the area of a pizza. Well, the area of a circle is pi R squared. And if the radius is gonna be written as X, well, that means the area is gonna be pi X squared. It's, it's not supposed to be confusing. It's not supposed to be a trick question. Write an expression for the area of a pizza if the radius is five centimeters squared. And did you know, I actually used this in high school to see what was a better pizza value for lunch. I wanna see how much pizza could I get for the smallest amount of money. And I actually calculated whether it was worth paying like an extra $5 for a, a large versus a medium or something using math where it counts the most, right? Here we go. Write an expression for the area of a pizza with a radius that is five centimeters greater. Okay, well, what was the radius again? It was X. So what's five more than that? Literally, X plus five. Do you see it? The radius right now is X. Well, what if I had a bigger pizza? With the radius that was X and an extra five. Well, then that would be my radius. How much greater is the second area? Write the difference as a simplified expression. Well, part C, I need to do the difference. So I'm gonna call this area one and area two. What is the difference between the area of the big pizza with the area of the small pizza? Hmm? Pardon? Well, I, I'm doing the big pizza minus the small pizza. And so my question here is asking, How much bigger is it actually? If you have five more radius, 
how much more pizza are you actually getting? And I actually remember using this in my calculations. Because, you know, when you're a teen, you're always hungry. I don't think I've ever been more hungry than when I was a teenager. I'm trying to get the most bang for buck. Some of you can relate. I know you're silent, but I know some of you can relate. Yes. Yeah. And that's my final question. And I'd like you to challenge you to see if you can figure that out. All right. We only have about nine minutes together. So I'm going to stop this here. Uh, this part, that one question on the front of the sheet, as well as some textbook questions, please use that as part of your practice. This is going to continue on tomorrow. Even when I am not here, please take that video seriously. And uh, yes, I won't be able to do homework text, but I am going to see how far you've been keeping up uh, when I come back. So keep practicing.